Welcome to Scoop Canada, where we dive into the real issues affecting Canadians. Today, we're shining a spotlight on Alberta's Premier Danielle Smith, who has taken a bold stand against mass immigration. With Alberta leading Canada in year-over-year -year population growth at a staggering 4.41%, the province is feeling the strain more than ever. Yet, in typical fashion, Justin Trudeau's Liberal government has offered no federal funding to support the province in this critical time. Danielle Smith is sounding the alarm, warning that Alberta is shouldering a larger burden than it can bear with its existing infrastructure. She's not wrong. While Trudeau is busy with his woke agendas and virtue signaling, Alberta is left to fend for itself, struggling to keep up with the influx of newcomers. Social programs and infrastructure are being stretched to the breaking point, and the federal government is nowhere to be found. It's time to face the facts Trudeau's reckless immigration policies are putting undue pressure on provinces like Alberta, and the Liberals are turning a blind eye. Danielle Smith is standing up for her province, but how much longer can Alberta bear the weight? A report by Rebel News mentioned that Premier Danielle Smith has been clear about her stance on mass immigration, and it's about time someone stood up to Trudeau's reckless policies. Yes, you heard it right. While the Trudeau government throws around $1,750 million to Quebec, $162 million to Toronto, and $32 million to Ottawa, Alberta gets left in the dust, despite taking in 22% of newcomers with only 12% of Canada's population. Premier Smith rightly points out that Alberta is in a very similar position to Quebec, yet where is the federal support? Nowhere to be found. Trudeau and his liberals seem more interested in playing favorites than actually addressing the real challenges facing our country. It's no wonder that Smith's views on immigration have sharpened. She's facing the harsh reality that Alberta simply can't keep up with the record-breaking numbers of immigrants the Trudeau government has allowed. Let's not forget, Smith once supported growing Alberta's population to 10 million by 2050, recognizing the need for immigrants to fill job vacancies and start new businesses. But even she sees that Trudeau's unchecked approach is doing more harm than good. While immigration can be beneficial, the sheer volume under Trudeau is overwhelming Alberta's infrastructure, social services, and housing market. And what's Trudeau's response to Alberta's plea for greater provincial autonomy on the immigration file? A flat-out refusal. The feds are turning a blind eye while Alberta struggles to accommodate the influx of newcomers. This isn't just about numbers, it's about a deteriorating federation that's failing Canadians. Our housing markets are strained, job opportunities are dwindling, educational institutions are overburdened, and access to social services is delayed. Trudeau's policies are not only failing Albertans, but also eroding the very foundation of Canada. Before we move further, discover our exclusive collection of mugs, hoodies, and a variety of daily accessories designed for Canada Conservative Party supporters. Show your pride with our conservative-themed products at affordable prices. Enjoy free delivery across Canada. Danielle Smith is right to demand better, and it's high time that Trudeau and his liberals face the consequences of their misguided decisions. Alberta deserves support, not neglect. The Trudeau government's approach to immigration is not just unsustainable, it's a direct threat to the well-being of all Canadians. As per the report by Aporia, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's immigration policies are a disaster in the making, causing more harm than good for both Canada and the countries that migrants leave behind. While Trudeau and his liberal allies like to boast about their so-called compassion. The reality is much darker. There are two main groups pushing for higher immigration, those who vote for left-wing parties driven by supposed altruism, and those who bankroll right-wing parties motivated by pure self-interest. The latter group supports higher immigration to flood the labor market, reducing workers' bargaining power, and increasing corporate profits, but Trudeau's liberals who claim to care about disadvantaged people are caught in a fundamental contradiction. The types of immigration that Trudeau promotes are either detrimental to Canada or devastating to the migrants' home countries. High-skilled immigration leads to brain drain in developing nations, depriving them of the talent needed for their economic development. Low-skilled immigration, on the other hand, harms Canada's working class by increasing competition for jobs, straining public services, and contributing to social tensions. Low-skilled immigration, while less damaging to the sending countries, creates significant challenges in the host country. It's no surprise that it is extremely unpopular among voters who see firsthand the negative impact on their communities. Trudeau's disregard for these concerns is yet another example of his government's failure to prioritize the needs of ordinary Canadians. In the end, Trudeau's immigration agenda is a lose-lose situation for the people he claims to champion. 
Whether it's the native working class in Canada or the disadvantaged populations in the countries migrants leave behind, Trudeau's policies hurt the very people he pretends to care about. It's time for a reality check. And Trudeau needs to be held accountable for the damage he's doing to both Canada and the world. The federal support has been woefully inadequate, leaving provinces like Alberta to shoulder a disproportionate burden. Premier Danielle Smith has pointed out how Alberta, which absorbs 22% of Canada's newcomers, is left without the necessary federal funding to support this influx. Meanwhile, Quebec and other provinces receive substantial financial aid, creating an uneven playing field that exacerbates regional disparities. Furthermore, Trudeau's handling of the immigration file undermines the very social programs and services that are supposed to support newcomers and native Canadians alike. The increased demand on healthcare, education, and social services is not matched by proportional funding or resources. This mismatch has led to longer wait times, diminished service quality, and increased frustration among Canadian citizens. Is this why we have mass immigration happening in Canada? The recent discovery by Alabama Secretary of State Wes Allen of over 3,200 non-citizens registered to vote is raising serious questions about voter integrity and immigration policies. Allen's investigation revealed that 742 of these non-citizens were from North Alabama alone, highlighting a significant breach in the system. While Democrats might argue that such issues are rare or exaggerated, the reality is that massive influxes of non-citizens and inadequate verification processes can lead to exactly this kind of problem. If voter rolls can be compromised by thousands of non-citizens, what other systems might be similarly affected by lax immigration policies? In Canada, the situation mirrors these concerns. As the Trudeau government pushes for high levels of immigration, critics argue that the lack of stringent checks and balances could be contributing to similar issues. The fear is that, without proper vetting, Canada's immigration system might struggle with the same challenges seen in Alabama. Also, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. And do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Is the push for mass immigration a way to overlook or even exploit systemic weaknesses? The growing trend of mass immigration could be putting additional strain on Canada's infrastructure, social services, and as highlighted by Alabama's issues, even its electoral integrity, this situation prompts us to ask whether the current immigration policies are truly in the best interest of the country or if they are opening doors to potential abuses and inefficiencies. In light of these concerns, it's crucial for Canada to reassess its immigration policies and ensure robust systems are in place to prevent similar problems. The integrity of voting systems and the proper management of immigration should be top priorities to safeguard the nation's democratic processes and social stability. It's time for a change in leadership that prioritizes practical solutions over ideological commitments and that truly addresses the needs of all Canadians.